What's up, guys? Face man here. Welcome to Diablo 4. Appreciate you guys coming by. Like this video if you will. Subscribe to the page and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And blessings to my channel members and patrons. Links in the description below. So, my necromancer is now level 40, okay? I have been taking the road less traveled. A lot of you guys out there are rushing this game, all right? You're forgetting the essence of what it is to be an adventurer. A discoverer of things. You're forgetting what it is to have a soul. Much is to be had in the journey. So I have been getting a grasp at what this character is, and many have said, Nay, Iceman, a summoner is no good. You need to respec now. But I persevered, and so far my minions are destroying shit, like crack crack. Let me show you. So I have seven skeletal warriors, and they're quite nice. The ones that I have chosen are the skirmishers. Sword-wielding skeletal minions that deal 30% increased damage but have 15% reduced life. But that doesn't even matter, they still stay alive. And here's how I upgraded it. You can raise one additional Skirmisher Warrior. And then as for the mages, I have Cold Mages. Cold Mages attacks will chill enemies, eventually freezing them in their tracks. And I have this modifier selected. Enemies who are frozen by or damaged while frozen by your Cold Mages. Primary attack are made vulnerable for four seconds, so they take more damage when vulnerable. It's quite nice, and as showcased in my previous video, I'm actually using Iron Golem right now. Check this out. You can make him go and stun shit for a moment, and it's actually quite devastating the damage that it does. As you can see here, dealing 1400 to 1800 damage and stunning surrounding enemies for three seconds. This has a 10 second cooldown. And I have almost maxed out Golem Mastery. So he will be doing an additional 25% damage and have an additional 25% life next time I level up. Because I'm pretty sure that's where that spec is going. But check this out. Let's see how well he fares against a horde of enemies. I'm just going to stand back, and I do have this buff active. Your minions have increased attack speed. I have that from the key passive. Kalan's Edict. After you have not taken damage in the last three seconds, your minions gain 15% attack speed. While you have at least seven minions, this bonus is doubled. And of course I have uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven minions counting my gloom. So here we go. He's going to attack. Stun some shit. Look at him stun that shit. Oh my god, it's devastating! Jeez! Look at this! It's amazing! I don't even have to do anything. Let me open up this chest. If, uh, okay, so I, I found a couple legendaries. I'll show you them in just a moment. Let me curse the enemies. But yeah, the golem, you can use it quite frequently. There it is again. As you can see, it stuns them. Oh my god, it's hideous. Love this shit. I love just being able to hang out and let your minions do most of the bidding. Your hombres, your thugs, your homies. It's just, uh, it's something that I definitely was missing out with on the droid. But I found a few unique pieces, one of which are these gloves, that I believe I showcased last video. Uh, I found an upgraded pair, the same gloves, just a higher level. Your maximum number of skeletal warriors is increased by two. And to my understanding, if you extract this legendary effect and imprint it, on, say, an amulet, to my understanding, you can have three warriors out at once. So I might do that.
But since my last video, I've actually attained this uh, aspect that I've imprinted on an amulet from completing a dungeon. And uh, when I imprinted it on the amulet, it made it into this legendary. Unyielding Commander's Necklace. 7.5% summoning skill damage, uh, which is very nice for my build. But here's the uh, aspect that I imprinted onto it. While Army of the Dead is active, your minions gain 105% attack speed and take 135% reduced damage. So just absolutely godly. So let's see what that looks like in action. Here's a swarm of enemies. I'm going to stun them up. Cast. I'll cast the thing. Holy shit! Oh my god! Holy shit! Uh, I kind of want to try that one more time. But basically, my gameplay, of course, uh, involves me hacking shit with a slight, uh, with a scythe, and casting Blood Nova or Blood Surge, rather, which is a Blood Nova. Here's what the gameplay looks like. Here's a biggie. What's nice with the minions is even when you're stunned or vulnerable or get knocked down, your minions are still fighting. Uh, when I was fighting the dungeon bosses, you can get knocked down and shit, and it's very nice having them continually be taking damage from your minions. So here's another golem effect here. Let's slam that ass. It stuns them, see that? And it stuns the bosses as well, in elites, so it's very practical. I'll stun this guy. And how often you can use it. Now, let me show you uh, how Clay Golem compares. Clay Golem has a, a pretty nice effect to it. So I will showcase that. Uh, I'll pause the video and get that going. And I must be too used to Diablo 2 because it's actually called Bone Golem. A horrid protector that taunts enemies, forcing them to attack the Golem. So yeah, your uh, active effect is having it taunt the enemies, and then they all run toward it, which is great, because it consolidates them, and it gets all the enemies in one uh, tight-fitting space, and uh, then you can go up in the grill and cast Blood Surge or Corpse Explosion or use your Scythe or just do whatever. It's nice having uh, the enemies uh, rile it up like that. Just, just riled up in a little circle, and you can destroy them. And then the modifier I chose is your bolt, your bone golem gains 10% maximum life and the amount of thorns they inherit from you is increased by 30% to 50%. And I think this one has a longer cooldown. Let's check it out. 16 seconds. So that's, that's the difference is this one's cooldown is over 50% longer than the iron golem's cooldown, which is very annoying because the iron golem I found I could use it almost all the time. Uh, every time I'd, 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 I'd clear the screen, go up to another swarm of enemies, and I could already use it again. But here's what it looks like. So, a, a very vast area of effect. So, let's see what it looks like in action. Oh, this is a cute little dungeon here. And this is actually one that I need to complete. Let me get a couple more enemies on the screen. These right here. You see that? And then they have the little... Uh, Haunt symbols over their heads, and most of them are uh, going after the golem then. Well, that's kind of what I've been into. I think I'm going to switch back to Iron Golem. I have been enjoying it. I think it looks really cool. And uh, just the fact that you can use the effect a lot more frequently, and it does a good amount of damage, it stuns the enemies. So I'm thinking I might go back to that. Uh, what's great about it is that they both have their purposes, and their purposes are very, very effective. So it's actually a tough decision as to which one to use. But I'm curious if you guys are playing as a Necro and having Golem out. Which one do you prefer? And of course, a lot of it depends on your build. Where maybe the Taunting one is better for a build that uh, that has to get up close to the enemies because it'll taunt them toward the golem, and then you just run up to the golem. You have most of the enemies at that point in your vicinity. And then you can just go up in there and start swinging your scythe around, or casting Blood Nova, and so forth. But uh, I'm curious of your progress so far in Diablo 4. 
What's your favorite build class so far? I'm thinking about making a uh, both a rogue and a sorcerer. I'm not really sure which one. I'd love to try a bow build with a rogue, even though I know it's probably not uh, the optimal endgame way to go. But maybe eventually it will be, and uh, maybe they'll make some some give some buffs to it for season one to where it could be more viable. We'll see. But uh, I would I would love to try an archer class because those have just always. I've been my field of interest ever since Diablo 1. I like to play as the Rogue, and in Diablo 2 I like to play as the Amazon. Even in Diablo 3, I played as the Demon Hunter for a minute. I uh, used Wind Force and things like that, and that other bow that was good for multi-shot. I can't remember what it was called at this point. But uh, yeah, I've actually, for the first time since uh, I've been uh, considering Diablo 4, I've been thinking about making a Rogue and trying an Archer build. So, stay tuned for some videos on that, or Sorcerer, I'm not sure which, but first off, I gotta get this Necromancer a little higher. I need to do the Capstone Dungeon, and I think I'm going to obliterate it with this build. Whereas my droid got his little tail absolutely demolished in the uh, Capstone Dungeon. Well, I actually made it all the way through, but I got killed by the final boss. Uh, and it was just, it was tedious, but I just don't feel like playing the droid. He's only level 50. And uh, I'd rather uh, keep going with this Necromancer. I only have 10 more levels to go, and I'll be matching him. And uh, then I could really do the true test. And uh, I think I am going to uh, complete that capstone without much issue at all, is what I'm anticipating. So, more videos on this character as well. I uh, appreciate you guys. Like this video if you will. Subscribe to the page. I'll talk to you all later. Peace be with you.